Tensai Shitara Slime Data Ken Chapter 145, the report left us both shocked and surprised. It was about the appearance of a group of people who had captured the 50th floor. Currently, this year the adventurers have greatly improved their skills. Groups that could capture the 30th floor gradually appeared. Floor capture strategies were invented using the phenomenon known as near death. Zombie attack plans or leave brains at home plans and so on. There are also people who choose to attack directly, along with improving their skills and improving their equipment. Their ability also increases from there. But after the 30th floor, there were not only deadly traps like in the beginning, but also monsters that went in groups to attack each other. It becomes more difficult to grasp when using these unorthodox methods of occupying the floor. So most of the occupying squads that are leading now imitated the way Masayuki and his team used to take the floor to confront the 40th floor guardian but the guardian of the 40th floor is the Kuang Wind Snake. It was the black snake I met earlier. It has a breath attack that is very effective against a group. Many of whom are sad in tears after their items have been destroyed by that breath. Then, since I was kind, I gladly lent them something from House Tempest. They have to compensate us if they break. Now that the profits they made have flowed into my pocket, we believe that a reliable guardian will bring us good luck. If only someone could beat it. Also, the guardian of the 50th floor is Gozerl. He embodies violence with restraint removed. After all, Gozerl wasn't weak at all. On the other hand, thanks to being restrained on the 30th floor, he will come up with many creative battle ideas on this floor. The old foolish Gozerl, the time of relying solely on her own brute strength, had completely disappeared. The same is true of Meserl. His brain drained together with Gozerl, the two split into two positions by discussing with each other. Before we knew it, the two of us no longer see each other when we're around, moreover. We're now best friends. The two take turns defending the 50th floor. I remember setting the drop rate to around 100% for the first win, as a bonus for those who can pass. It was the unique class equipment, the Minnows set. It was an item that wore an absurd power named after the ruler of the labyrinth, the Minotaur. Weapon 1 is the Minnows Bardici, Battle of the Buffalo-Headed Demon, or the Minnows Trident, War of the Horse-Faced Demon. No shields. Then there are the pieces for a complete armor. It was a gem that was crafted with great effort by the hands of Kurobi's finest disciples. Since I believe that not many people get to that floor easily, I only prepared 10 feet, no more. Because in the first place, Gozerl and Meserl became stronger after being named by me, so if there is someone qualified to defeat them then I have to track them down. That's because, I've set up an emergency alert system once they're defeated. On the other hand, if there were a large number of adventurers fighting in waves, both of them would accumulate fatigue and be defeated. But no matter what method they used to defeat them, I also want to know who managed to defeat Gozerl and Meserl. In case they don't want to be tracked, there's a big chance that the party is hostile. This time too, were they attacking each other in waves just because of Masayuki's charm? When I thought that, my prediction was turned upside down. According to reports, Gozerl was defeated by a party of only three. More than that, they weren't the usual ones that had been active lately, they seemed to be newcomers who had just arrived. It is essential to gather information about these newcomers. Because of that, I cancelled the long-awaited test run on improving the search magic. And immediately ran to the control room prepared in the labyrinth. When I arrived, Ramirez and Veldora were also present. Dino and Bester seemed to be on vacation. Never mind Dino. Bester was already loaded with fatigue since he got here, so now was the perfect time for him. Ramirez and Veldora were active as usual. Both are strangers in that tired concept. That is called children's vitality. If kids do something they like, they don't get tired. Oh, you're here, Commander. The situation today is no different. I don't understand what it means to be unchanged. Perhaps, she said that because it matched the general mood. I looked at the image reflected on the big screen. The picture shown above is of three young men. Looks like they passed through the floors with unstoppable speed. The fighting style is also very unique. With a clearly abnormal hand throw, the person grabs the air and throws it away. He's big, sturdy, and has brown hair. With the details placed very elegantly, he has a very good appearance. 
He didn't wear heavy equipment like iron armor, but instead had mesh armor woven with steel threads, along with a coat. They all look pretty similar. The thin one covered his whole body with a jet black cloak, and the other man wore a white robe with mesh armor underneath. He's Asian, and that white robe is often seen in hospitals. Look closely. He's the Japanese type. Without a doubt, he was a otherworlder. A group of six purple wolf, ghost wolf, rushed forward. With a speed that a typical adventurer would never notice. The SWA closed the distance with a single launch. It seems that it made the decision immediately from a long distance, the attack will be only one way. It's true that monsters on the level after the 50th floor are different. Even a monster that looks like a kid has considerable intelligence. By the way, a single purple wolf is also in the B-plus rank range, so the six combined would be more than that. It is also a ghost-type monster with the ability to cancel damage from non-holy or magic-type weapons. Even if the true body is destroyed, it will recover immediately. Therefore, when there is no plan to deal with it, even one is dangerous. You will be torn apart immediately if you are careless. Don't look down on me, you dogs. The brunette who had been using his bare hands until now took out a ferocious battle axe and swung it violently. With each swing, the three purple wolf turned into particles of light and disappeared. Ah, that ferocious battle axe, I soon realized it was the Minnow's Bardici. It was a unique item, and of course, it was also a magic weapon. Even if the user can't cast spells, it can still deal damage with the amount of magic power cast on the weapon. Furthermore, it is related to the source of the raw materials that make up the minnows. The metal is mixed with demon steel and transformed into mithril. It was a specially crafted weapon that could easily deal great damage to undead and ghost-type monsters. Well, if it's the minnows barked, the purple wolf would be defeated in a single swing. Yes, that weapon tree was something dropped from Gozerl. The axe wielder's combat sense and ability to use multiple weapons seem to be great. Veldora agreed with my grumbling. Next, I heard about the battle stories so far while observing their fighting style. As for snacks, I'd rather eat potatoes today. Based on the story I heard about them, the vanguard of the team was mostly that brown-haired guy. I have seen it with my own eyes and understood. That brown-haired guy is strong. However, what happened to the many pitfalls of the labyrinth? Answering that question, the man in the black robe easily discovered them, and warned his comrades of their location. With traps that are difficult to understand or trick, they make up the majority from the 50th floor. As if he could see them, the man in the black robe indicated the location of the trap. I guess it's some kind of ability. That person is said to be extremely important in capturing the labyrinth. The last one is the guy in the white robe, his turn has only been one so far. It was time to fight Gozerl. I've seen that scene through the monitor, but I'm sure this guy is the one with the unique skill. He took out a few syringes from his pocket and gave them to two of his teammates. Immediately, Gozerl's movement slowed down rapidly. He must have been hit with some kind of abnormal state, but since Gozerl's movements were slowed down, he became an easy target for the brunette. The one who delivered the finishing blow was the man in the white robe. He pulled out a silver shining knife from his pocket and immediately cut off the blood vessel at the back of Gozerl's neck. I found him to be the wise type, the type that assesses the situation and chooses the right moment to strike. Unlike those muscular brains that are all pounding each other without thinking. Their party is very well balanced. Notification. Analysis results are available. The attack that subject Gozerl received was of a type that closely resembled a psychoactive substance. The room was filled with toxic gas, a poison that limited the movement of non-resistive subjects. The effect is no longer available. Ah, poison gas. And in addition, he seemed to have concluded some tactics that worked against the enemy, on the spot. I base the analysis that Raphael concludes on the data, which is still in the air. I also guessed based on that white robe. There was no doubt that it was a unique skill related to the medical industry. At that moment, I heard a knock on the door. Then the door was opened and Shuna stepped inside. She was carrying a stack of documents, which were the kind of papers that recorded the information of those three at the Adventurer's Guild which had become a branch of the commission. This is the registration information of the three people who succeeded in capturing the 50th floor. Shuna presented the documents after bowing. 
I nodded in agreement and confirmed the content. Shinji 23 years old, wizard. Mark 26 years old, warrior. Shen is 17 years old, hunter. So only the bare minimum of information is revealed. Their homeland was a small country adjacent to the empire. The reason they came here stated in the text was because they heard rumors about the labyrinth from a merchant. Well, well, no matter how you look at it, this is just a lie. If I remember correctly, mages need to contract with spirits before they can use magic. Nen masters process the chant based on their understanding of the element. Magician is an advanced profession that requires mastery of the other two. It is a noble and difficult profession that is rarely achieved. The warrior is similar. It is necessary to have experience from the two professions of gladiator and swordsman, because the warrior is an expert in close combat capable of multi-use in all types of weapons. It is certainly not easy to achieve that position. We glide to the last one, a hunter. This profession is the pinnacle of those who practice monster hunters. It is an occupation that is most occupied and belongs to the fine workshop. In this world, people with excellent skills in detecting traps and monsters had the profession of thieves. Meanwhile, calling yourself a hunter was also possible because this world didn't have any native hunting tribes. Right now their group is both standard and stable, but if they really are from the empire, there's no doubt they're spies. However, were they so foolishly honest in writing this fact? They did it because they ran out of ways, but I think there's still another way. Like they can decide to say that they're here from the demon lord's territory under Milam's rule, or from the continent. Another under the reign of Leon, for example. Oh my god. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter, but there's someone I have to keep an eye on. The guy with the black hair, the white coat, the young man named Shinji. Instead of magic, he used some kind of mysterious power. And more than that, no matter how young or old he was, his name was Shinji. The brown-haired guy's name is Mark. Not only did he throw gas bullets and monster corpses, but also falling rocks. In conclusion, he can throw anything as long as he shoots. He even grabbed the monster alive and threw it, damaging both monsters and killing them too, watching that I almost spit out the tea in my mouth. But it seems that his title of warrior is no lie, since he skillfully wields the minnow's barkid. The guy in the black robe is Shen. This guy seems to have eyes that can see through traps perfectly. At first I thought it was due to good intuition but it seems that it is due to danger, monster. And trap. With those, he could avoid anything in front of him. He saw the trap set up and warned his two teammates, and I'm sure it wasn't a coincidence. Usually from the 50th floor onwards. The brutal traps are increasing, which is the main danger besides the power of the monsters. Not surprisingly, the room can be filled with ghost-type monsters, the pressure of the air changes. And the source of oxygen or poisoned water is destroyed. Just like that, I've set traps at a dangerous level to prevent anyone from taking over this labyrinth. But everything is seen through by him so they're useless. Furthermore, his sense of direction was also outstanding. He didn't get flustered when the floor was rotated or otherwise. And quickly advanced using the shortest path. Certainly, the labyrinth has no effect at all. If there were a few minor injuries, the guy in the blue and white shirt Shinji would be able to handle it easily. Although there were only three of them, they were people with a special talent for conquering labyrinths. However, the three of us were delighted to see their method of capturing the labyrinth. No, there's no way we're going to use them as a reference when we're taking over the labyrinth or something like that. Don't think so. Hey man, I said I can only honestly appreciate the fighting style of strong individuals. Shuna made tea for the three of them, who were stunned. The tea we drink today is black tea with an elegant apple scent. It's time to get more serious after the 50th floor. But the difficulty hasn't changed for those who made it all the way to the 50th floor without activating any traps. If that's the case, I think this is an important test of their ability. I'll use their results whether or not they defeat the guardian of the 70th floor. The guardian of this 60th floor is Demon King Adelman. It was a high-level demon king with a shiny skeleton. It was once a priest who had gone to purify the dead souls that had spread from the remnants of the battlefields of the Great Jura Forest. But he had become a shadow of himself after becoming a undead, because his abnormal condition was undead, he couldn't escape. But then as a result, Monk Adelman became an undead with terrifying magic power. 
It had become the king of ghosts with that amount of magic power, and had locked itself in a dark cave quietly. When I claimed to be the demon lord, I personally went to greet him. At that point he almost got purged, it wasn't fun. That's him, the guardian of the 60th floor. Unfortunately, I believe those three are at a disadvantage. Demon King Adelman has a combat strength far beyond a rank, EP, 44,000 points. To put it bluntly, he's ranked higher than both Gozerl and Meserl. His strength was not comparable to the demons, but there was nothing he could do when the weakness was so obvious. He is extremely weak to saint or light type attacks. He is an extremely annoying entity if you fight seriously because he can summon ghost knights and ma langans non-stop. If he attacked a city, he would be recorded as a catastrophe. Although it could be said that they shared a common weakness. Moreover, with this floor, when they got used to the traps, I made it too easy for them to defeat the boss. If someone could defeat Gozerl and Meserl using only brute force, they would be able to defeat him if they focused on the weak point. More than that, that's it. I was wrong with the Minos Bardici, they can wipe out enemies with a single swing. That axe is made of mithril metal with the holy attribute. It deals double damage against ghost type or undead type enemies. Because it's a limited first drop or something like that, are they a bit cocky? So, I did something bad to Demon King Adelman. Unfortunately, he couldn't stop the three of them either. Which is my fault, but I hope he can forgive me. I thought so and gave hope to the 70th floor guardian. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Please support me one subscription.